What's going on guys? It's Sunday, February 20th. Figured to do a little tutorial, basically since it's winter time still and I've been doing a lot of flying in the winter scenes here and we've had snow, why not go ahead and do something on working with an image and retouching an image shot with your drone, specifically my Evo 2 Pro 6K, which is an amazing drone for photography in my opinion. Hands down the best drone, better than the Mavic 3. Sorry, not sorry, it kicks its ass and just does a better job because for whatever reason, it just has a more pleasing file. They look better for whatever it's worth. I don't know why. When I started flying drones back with the Phantom 4 and Phantom 4 Pros and stuff, you can tell that it's a drone file. It's kind of like a GoPro file. You can tell straight away when we were in Hawaii and shooting with GoPros as opposed to someone using a real camera in a housing, you can tell right away that it's a GoPro. It doesn't matter, GoPro Hero 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's still a GoPro at the end of the day. And you can tell, there's no doubt about the way the file looks, it looks over sharpened or whatever it may be. And that's kind of how DJI files are to me, in my opinion. And I'll tell with this Evo 2 Pro 6K sensor camera, has been the first drone that I've actually used where the actual file to me looks like a camera file, something like a D800 or D850 or just something nicer quality than a drone. So whatever they're doing, they're doing it really well. And again, professional photographer for 22 years, I worked with medium format backs, $100,000 Hasselblad cameras, all kinds of stuff from large commercial photo shoots. So I do know a little bit about files and retouching and been featured on Photoshop user magazine covers and all kinds of stuff in the industry. So I do have a clue about color and color theory. I've studied with some of the best of them and I'm just saying that not to kind of tout my own little horn, just so you guys understand that I've looked at a ton of files over the years and this is my personal opinion. I think the Autel files look a lot nicer than the DJI ones. And not saying they look bad, they just look better. They just do something for some reason with this Autel sensor, and it just is more pleasing to the eye. So with that being said, this is enough about this 6K sensor being kick-ass. I just want to show you guys a little bit about retouching an image, basically with the winter scene, more specifically snow, and a kind of good way of working the DNG file. Now, if you do have a drone, definitely shoot in RAW plus JPEG. Most of the files are small enough that you can go ahead and do it. It's not like you're capturing ProRes footage where you have a ton of extra space because you're capturing raw. It really is pretty minor. Memory cards are inexpensive now. So again, make sure you do because you can get that much more out of your file than a processed out JPEG. So nice looking JPEG, but we can get more with the same image. This is actually the same image, this 5.5. And we'll go ahead and click on a DNG. Now you see we have camera raw dialog box because this is the way we process out a raw file. We have exposure, all our sliders, contrast, highlights, shadow recovery, highlight recovery. You can see we're gonna bring back a little bit more detail in the snow. If I go ahead and do that, I'm gonna hit Command Z for the moment, which is undo. And you can see that it's kind of blown out a little bit. We wanna make sure with snow that it doesn't need to be perfectly detailed, but at the same time, you don't want it to have no information, meaning blown out to where there's basically no pixels in there. But let's go ahead and just kind of get the file somewhat to where we want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just crank the saturation slider a little bit, not crank it, but maybe go to 46 or 45. Vibrance essentially is a smart saturation slider. In theory, the vibrance slider should only apply saturation to the area that needs it most. But I don't really like vibrance. It was kind of a cool thing in the beginning, but I find saturation gives a better, more pleasing result. And I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it at 45 right now. One of the things we wanna be conscious of is a lot of times if you crank, say the saturation, you're gonna start seeing almost like a bluing in the shadows and in the whole area, like a color cast. And that's not cool, it's not pleasing. I'm gonna hit Command Z to get out of that vibrance horrible thing that I made, but we're gonna see, it doesn't look too bad so far, but we wanna go ahead and get the saturation slider not that extreme. So we're gonna go back to say around 46. And if we go ahead and zoom in a little bit, 
you can see right away. So there's a little detail here. You can kind of zoom in a little further. You can see it's not completely white. You can see how well this camera does too. You can see, you know, the guy's shirt, he's wearing a plaid shirt, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it really is a good looking file. So we're gonna, let me see what else we can do. Maybe pull in the blacks a teeny bit. No, I don't even think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do a couple things with this. So right over here, we can go ahead and mask. So this little area, the Batavia building, it looks kind of washed out to me, but I don't wanna go ahead and tweak everything. I just wanna go ahead and affect just this zone, this red and the Batavia black. It kind of looks gray. It just doesn't look contrasty enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. This little circle will allow us to create a mask. So I'm gonna use a brush. And what I can do is just paint a little mask in this zone and it will affect only the area in red, which you may not be able to see really well, but let me see there. You can kind of see it, see the Batavia zone. I'm gonna hit the overlay and I'll kind of show, this is actually red, but it's on a red building right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the blacks a little bit. And that looks a lot better, just that alone. And maybe increase the saturation a teeny bit. Let me see, that's, no, I don't need this. Let me see the blacks one more time. So I'm gonna, yeah, keep it right around there. And that should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and open object. I have it as a smart object. And essentially, smart object is a vector type image file. It's not rasterized yet. And the only thing you need to know is if you double click, really with smart objects, the whole thing, you can see this little thing. It's like a little folder kind of thing on a page on the lower um, right hand corner. That's gonna signify that it's a smart object. If I double click right on the icon, it's gonna open up the camera raw dialog box again. And that's really the key. That's all you need to know. That's the key to this whole smart object thing is having access to the camera raw dialog controls so I can get back into it and tweak constantly essentially. So now what I can do, and this guy Jeff Shiwi, who's a really amazing Photoshop retoucher out of Chicago, he's on the credits on Photoshop. so. You know, he's part of the programming team. Anyway, just an amazing guy. And I went to a couple of his lectures in Chicago way back in the day, probably, I don't even know, a long time ago. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit control. He showed me this little thing and it really has been one of the coolest things I've ever used in Photoshop. So if I hit control on my Mac, I can click here and I can do new smart object via copy. And what that's gonna allow me to do is now get into that camera raw dialog box, but with a different set of controls than the previous layer. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and click this. Say I wanna go ahead and just affect the sky. Maybe I'll go ahead and crank up the dehaze a teeny bit to add a little bit more contrast or whatever you wanna say in the clouds. Maybe pull up this exposure a teeny bit. And really that's about it, just a minor little tweak. And I can go ahead and hit okay out of that. And now what I can do, so two separate layers. So basically I can get into this camera raw dialog box with different adjustments and I can get into this one down below by double clicking and we'll have, again, the adjustments for the first thing that I did. And now what I can do is go to the top layer, hold down the option key on my Mac, hit the layer mask icon and it will do a conceal all layer mask. So essentially what this means is I'm basically hiding every adjustment on that top layer. And now what I'm gonna do is paint reveal with the opposite color. So again, this is a lot to take in, but regardless, just know that you're gonna be using the opposite color. So if you look at the foreground color, it's white over here. If I was painting with black, basically I'm not doing anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint with white, hit beef, which is a keyboard shortcut for my paintbrush tool. I'm gonna increase my brush size and then I can just go ahead and paint in this zone right here. And now the clouds just look a little better. I can go ahead and maybe hit the five key, hit the tab key to hide everything, and maybe just affect a little bit less opacity of the brush and just kind of paint in a couple zones down there. And now we have essentially a pretty good looking image for the most part. You can probably still tweak so I'm gonna collapse everything. Now we can go over here 
Maybe we can remove some of these cones. So like the cones are probably kind of ugly. We can go ahead and hit the L, which is the lasso tool. And I can go ahead and make a loose selection. I'm going to hit Shift F5. Make sure Content Aware Fill is selected. So make sure this is set to Content Aware. Hit OK. Boom. It's kind of left a little weird thing. Hit Shift F5 again. Boom. Pretty good. Whoop. Get out of there. Command D to deselect. I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time. Make a loose selection. Shift F5. Return. Get that little zone out of there. Shift F5. OK out of it. And then let me see if I get the shadow. There we go to Shift F5, just the shadow. Shift F5, boom. So I can get this shadow out of there too from the cone that doesn't exist because we just removed it. Voila. And that's a quick little way to get rid of some unwanted things. Like I don't know if there's anything else. It really didn't look bad, honestly. But we're going to go ahead and be okay with that. And now what I can do is maybe make another layer. And now what I can do is use one of my filters. So I use On One software has this plugin set called On One Effects. And I got to get more current. I think this is 2020. They actually work with me. So they give me the licenses to the software and I get to test it out and stuff. But regardless, I'm going to reset all and kind of get it back to zero, meaning nothing effect wise. So basically what I can do now is maybe click one of these and just kind of add. This is a little bit too much. So I'm going to command Z and undo that. And I'm just going to try some of the different ones. This one sometimes does a nice job. Eh, no, I don't like that. So I'm going to command Z back out of that. And maybe this won't work. Maybe this is not the way to go. That looks kind of a little bit too much. And I can see right here on the right hand side, I can toggle this and kind of see what it's doing. Color enhancer. So maybe the color enhancer I can leave off. Ooh, the vignette's really heavy. But the vignette's not bad. So let's just go ahead and hit done and see what this looks like. And again, I have it on a separate layer. So you can see, it kind of does look good. And if you look in, and zoom in on the file with this Autel camera from the 6K. It just looks good. I don't know. Maybe I can pull up a Mavic 3 file or something. Let me see. Just to kind of show you. Not saying a Mavic 3 file doesn't look good. But I just don't think it looks as good. Let me see. Hold on a second. I just hit the wrong thing. So let's just try one DNG. And I can automatically tell that it doesn't look bad. It looks good, mind you. But I'm just going to just tweak a little bit just because I want it to look a little bit like decent. I don't even know when this was. Um, open object. I can see. Let me go ahead and do the whole shift option command I. Hasselblad. So, right? origin but this should be oop, camera data I don't know that is my Mavic 3 and if we zoom in it just doesn't look as good I mean that's just the reality I don't know what that was set to it was set to f2.8 so maybe I should have had a little bit more it was wide open on this guy so I don't know what this, let me see what the other one was. This is Autel Robotics. So this was F8. So realistically, this should be a little bit more depth of field, meaning it should be focused a little bit more because it's not so shallow. But 
it's just the look and feel of the Autel sensor than the DJI. I don't know why, as I said, it's just one of those things where every time I had a drone, whether it was a Spark or whether it was a Mavic Air, Mavic Air 2, anything, it always kind of just looks like a DJI drone and it never really impressed me. And the Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K has been the first drone sensor that actually impressed me. So whatever that's worth, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So let's get back to the Autel file. And that's what we have, something like that. I mean, we can go a little bit further if we wanted to. This was kind of the point, was that snow and kind of retouching a winter image. If I hit Command U, what I can do is go ahead and go to Master and select Blues and then just desaturate maybe my blues a little bit and see how it kind of just cleans things up. There's no color cast. Color casts are really not pleasing visually. So that alone is a good thing with snow images, getting rid of the blue tint and the color cast that you can get when you just slam a saturation slider. Again, without the removal of the blue, and I'm gonna click it, and it just kind of cleans everything up. It's really subtle, but it's nice. And that's it. I mean, nice little local scene. This is a nice way to promote yourself. If you're in your community, this is a historic place in this town that I live. So this is a good way, again, to get the word out there, showing people you're a drone pilot, you're a photographer. Maybe if I'm shooting video, I'm a videographer. You know, all kinds of cool stuff. But the point is to show you that the Autel Evo 2 Pro 6K kicks ass. And if you're retouching an image with snow, just be conscious of some of the stuff like the blue tints that you can get when you're slamming your saturation sliders. And again, shooting in raw and also being aware of maybe working with a smart object. And if you aren't familiar with that, just so you know, I'm going to go ahead and get back to my finder window and open up something else. So let me open up another DNG. And over here, right below the little stars, if I click this, I can go ahead and click this little thing that says open in Photoshop as a smart object. I always have this clicked. I always work in smart objects. It doesn't mean I don't rasterize the file and merge it and flatten it eventually, but I keep it like that. And if I wanted to open it up as a normal file, all I have to do is hold down, I think it's the option key, and it will allow me, it should allow me to, wait, let me see. Yeah, I think it allows me to open it up as just a normal file. So regardless, that's kind of it. Hopefully this helps a little bit and showing you guys a little workflow on how to go ahead and work through an image and just an awesome drone. If you zoom in, I mean, you can see a lot of detail, you know, I mean, I wish it was like a D850 file, but it's not. But regardless, it's closer than a Mavic 3 or another drone file. So with that being said, hope this helps. Aloha. And I get my Nano Plus back to me tomorrow. So I'll start doing some testing with that drone. And we'll see what that thing can produce. And I'm going to go ahead and do a video basically comparing the Nano Plus file to the Evo 2 Pro 6K as well as the Mini 2. So stay tuned for that. That should probably be happening midweek. And have a great week, guys. Happy Sunday and happy Monday. Bye.